weak acid equilibria, Ka, and calculating the pH of a weak acid solution. So let's just remind ourselves of strong versus weak acids. So strong acids dissociate completely in solution. We've talked about this a lot. And weak acids only partially dissociate in solution. This discussion is going to center around weak acids and how to calculate the pH for a weak acid solution. And so remember, we also talked about preparing a one molar solution of hydrofluoric acid. And hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. Remember that we couldn't figure out the hydronium ion concentration by inspection because there's an equilibrium between the weak acid and the products. And so we need to find the hydronium ion concentration by calculating the equilibrium concentration of hydrofluoric acid, fluoride anion, and hydronium in particular, because that's what we're going to use to calculate the pH. Now, how can we do this? So basically, using the idea that an equilibrium exists between the weak acid and its products, we can use the relationship between the value of the equilibrium constant K and the initial concentration of a weak acid in solution. So how do we do that? Now using the idea that we have an equilibrium that exists between the weak acid and its products, so this is just a general weak acid. Here we have our weak acid and the conjugate base, and of course since we have a weak acid in solution we're producing hydronium. We can write an equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. So here, remember, the equilibrium constant expression is products over reactants. So the concentration of hydronium multiplied by the concentration of the conjugate base. Both of those coefficients are 1. These are both to the first power, and we don't show that explicitly. And that's going to be over reactants, so the concentration of the weak acid. And remember that the activity for a pure liquid or solid is 1. And that's from heterogeneous equilibria, so we're going to use that. And so here we have an equilibrium constant expression for a weak acid in water, or a weak acid in solution. So what we're going to do now is simply rename this equilibrium constant. It just has a new name. It's the same old thing. Now it's Ka. And Ka is called the acid dissociation constant. We often just say Ka, though. And so the value for Ka, an example value for hydrofluoric acid, for instance, is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4. So these are usually pretty small. And so again, just like we did before, we can write the equilibrium constant expression and plug in the value for Ka. So what does this get you thinking about? If you started thinking about an ice table, then you're exactly right. So we can use that Ka value, that equilibrium constant value, and an ice table to figure out the concentration of hydronium at equilibrium. Now we can get the concentration of everything else at equilibrium too, but we don't really care as much. What we care about is this hydronium ion concentration because we can use it to calculate the pH. Okay, so let's do an example problem with a different weak acid. So we're going to prepare a 0.25 molar nitrous acid solution. And the Ka for nitrous acid is 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4. And we want to calculate the pH of this solution. So what do we do? The first step on all of these problems, write the chemical equation for the weak acid equilibrium. You have to write it out. That will give you an idea of where to go from there. So if we put this weak acid, nitrous acid, in solution, in water, and it's in equilibrium with hydronium and the conjugate base, which in this case is nitrite. All right, so you should be able to do that. Take the weak acid that you were given, put it in water, and generate the products. And so the weak acid is going to produce hydronium. After it donates that H plus to water, then whatever's left is the conjugate base. Now let's go ahead and start putting together an ice table. So here we have, remember, this is initial, change, and at equilibrium. And we're going to use this, the information that we calculate with our ice table 
and our calculations to get the pH of the solution because we'll end up with the hydronium ion concentration at the end of this. So let's plug in our initial conditions. So we were told we have 0.25 molar nitrous acid solution. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And remember, initially we're going to say we have none of this. Okay, so no hydronium, no nitrite. Now as the system approaches equilibrium, some of the nitrous acid is going to be converted to products. So minus x, so minus some amount of nitrous acid to form some amount of each hydronium and nitrite. At equilibrium, we just add these guys together. So 0.25 minus x, that's the nitrous acid concentration. And then x is going to be hydronium and nitrite. So what do we do next? The same thing basically that we did all through the equilibrium unit. And we're just going to basically do an equilibrium problem. Okay, so plug in x for each hydronium and nitrite in the equation. And that's going to simplify to x squared. And then the nitrous acid solution is going to be 0.25 minus x in the denominator. Let's set that equal to the Ka value and solve for x. Now, here's a little trick. Because this Ka value is so small, so it's quite small. It's not as small as it could be, but it's, it's pretty small. Because it's small, then this amount of change x is going to be pretty darn small. All right, so this small value of Ka says that there is very little product. So that means very little of the acid is going to be converted to products. So we can actually simplify this calculation. We could put this in the quadratic equation. All right, so I, let me say that first. You can do that. If you're more comfortable, you can do that. Or we can just say, you know, this isn't going to be very big. So compared to 0.25, I'm just going to set that equal to 0 and then solve for this x. Okay. So in this case, that's what I'm doing. Again, you could rearrange this and put it into the quadratic equation. That would work as well. OK, so using the simplification, so x is 0. I'm going to put that in there. And of course, it's still equal to Ka. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 0.25 to get this quantity equals x squared. And then we're going to end up with 1.15 times 10 to the negative 4 is equal to x squared. Take the square root of both of those, or to the 1 half power, which is easier to put in the calculator. And you're going to end up with 1.07 times 10 to the negative 2, and that's going to be your x. So this x in these weak acid equilibrium problems, that is the hydronium ion concentration. So let's go ahead and plug that x in for everything. So here's our hydronium ion concentration. Here's our concentration of nitrite, which we don't really care. And we also don't really care what the actual concentration of the acid is. Now, of course, you know this has some rounding. So it's 0.24 molar approximately. All right, but let's use our hydronium ion concentration, plug that in, and we get a pH of 1.97 for this solution. And so remember, with a weak acid, in order to get the pH, you have to do an equilibrium problem. Now, one more thing we can do with this is get an idea of the percentage of the weak acid that was dissociated. And so we can get percent dissociation by taking the concentration of hydronium at equilibrium divided by the initial concentration of the weak acid and multiply it by 100 to get a percent. And so when we do that, we're going to put in our hydronium ion concentration divided by 0.25, which is our initial concentration of acid, multiply the whole thing by 100 and get 4.28%. So not very much of it dissociated. Okay, next we're going to do the same thing with weak bases. 